الله عز وجل says ولله الأسماء الحسنى and to Allah belong the most perfect, excellent and beautiful names. The more one knows about Allah Azza wa Jal, His names and attributes, the more he loves Him, the more he fears Him, the more he has hope in Him, and the more he glorifies Him. We've addressed few names in a previous khutbah today. I'm going to talk about two of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal who hold the same meaning. Al-Hafiz and Al-Hafiz. Al-Hafiz is the guardian, the preserver. The caretaker and the protector, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al-hafiz is the intensive form of the word hafiz. It holds the same meaning, but it's the intensive form of that word. In the musnad of al-imam Ahmad, and it's classified as authentic by al-albani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا اسْتُودِعَ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا حَفِظَهُ When Allah is entrusted with something, He preserves it, He guards it, He protects it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the following story is one of the most amazing stories that one can hear. And if it is not something that was told to us by the trustworthy, the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal trusted with his message, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would wonder if it really happened or not. But these are the very words of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who does not speak out of desire as Allah told us, it is none but revelation. Al-Bukhari reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and it's a story that happened in the children of, or between two people from the children of Israel. He said one of them became in need of money and wanted to borrow 1,000 dinar. Dinar is a golden currency. So he went to another man from the children of Israel and he said, I need a thousand dinars as a loan. So would you lend me? He said, yes, but bring me a witness to testify. He said, Kafa billahi shahida. Allah is sufficient as a witness. So the man And then he said, okay, bring someone to guarantee. Meaning if you don't fulfill, he will guarantee. He will be the guarantor. He said, Allah is sufficient as a guarantor. The man pondered and he said, indeed, you're right. Allah is sufficient. Now look at the hearts of these two people. So the man gave him the uh, thousand dinars and they agreed on a, a due, la due date where he's going to repay him the, uh, the loan. So the man took the money and went on a ship and went on a business journey and started buying and selling, buying and selling until he finished. He made that money back and he made a profit. He gained a profit and he wanted to go back at the due date. So he went to the seashore looking for a ship to take him back or to send the money back with it to the lender. But he couldn't. In one of the narrations, it said that the waves were too strong and too high. No ships were sailing. 
looking left, looking right. The man could not find any means to go. And it was due. He had to pay that money at that time. So he did something that's out of this world. He picked up a piece of firewood. He dug a hole in it. Stuck that money in. And stuck with it a letter saying to the man that this is your money back. And one of the narrations it said, he wrote, The one whom you agreed to be the guarantor is paying you back, delivering back to you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he sealed that place, the hole. Some of the scholars, when explaining this hadith, they said, he poured melted wax on it for two reasons, to prevent that money and the letter to come out and to prevent water from going in. And then he threw that piece of wood into the sea and waited until it disappeared. You couldn't see it anymore. And left and continued to look for a means of going back because he did not consider himself paying off the debt he just wanted to to exhaust all means possible so at that time during that period that man started going out to the sea waiting to see if there were ships coming with the man coming back or someone bringing him his money back. And in one of the narrations, he said, Oh Allah, I accepted, I accepted you as a guarantor, so do deliver. And here he sees a piece of firewood floating, coming to the shore. So he picks it up, taking it home to use it as firewood. He goes home to his family and he breaks that into pieces only to find his money with the letter sent by the man who borrowed the money from him. Days later, the man found a ship and he came back and looked for the man and found him, went to his house and found him. And he said, this is your thousand dinars back. Now this is the second thousand. And a thousand dinars, as some of the contemporary scholars said, are equal to four kg of gold. That's a lot of money in our time, let alone that time. He said, the lender, did you happen to send me anything, any money? So the man said, what are you talking about? I am telling you, this is the very first ship anyone could have taken from the place I am in. And I came back to pay you. Now that first man... The lender could have said, I didn't get anything and take another thousand. And that indebted person could have said, yes, I sent you a piece of wood with a thousand dinars and I paid you off. Hearts that are attached to Allah Azza wa Jal. They deal with humans based on the fact that Allah is all-knowing, all-seeing. Encompassed everything with his knowledge. He said, hold on to your thousand dinars. The one we accepted as a, as a guarantor delivered your thousand dinars in the piece of wood. So take your money and leave. I swear by Allah, 
had this not been said by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would have been extremely difficult to believe. That anyone would deal with such a large amount of money with this level of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. When you know that Allah is Hafiz and Hafiz, truly know that He is, and live your life based on this knowledge. Things like this, behavior like this, can happen. A few points related to the hadith that when Allah Azza wa is entrusted with something, He preserves, guards, and protects it. The scholar said, we extract from this that it is legislated to ask Allah's protection in our dua. And this was the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, when, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, whenever he used to go to sleep, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the supplications and the adhkar of going to sleep was that when he was talking about his soul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in amsakta nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha. If you withhold my soul, withholding it meaning if you cause it to die, so have mercy on it. And if you set it free, meaning if you allow me or you permit that I continue to live, then guard it, protect it. So he's asking Allah Azza wa Jal's protection in this dua. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to supplicate Allah Azza wa and used to teach the companions uh, in the Musnad of Ahmad and classified as authentic by Al-Albani whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bid farewell to one of the companions when they're going out on a journey or something he would say astawdi'u Allah deenaka wa amanataka wa khawatima amalik I entrust Allah with your religion, your faith, your practice. The scholar said that, that during uh, a journey, one becomes exhausted, it's tiring, and sometimes people might take certain acts of worship lightly. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ used to entrust Allah with their faith, with their religion, with their practice. وَأَمَانَتَكَ Amanatak, the scholar said, refers to anything that man leaves behind. Wealth, children, wife, family, what have you. وَخَوَاتِيمَ amalik, The end of your deeds, they said, the Prophet ﷺ is supplicating Allah to grant him or them a good end. To end their lives with a good deed. So it is legislated that we supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal, we entrust Allah Azza wa Jal with our children, our faith, our wealth, our families. One man, and this is a contemporary story, said, Whenever I would leave my car outside and go home, at the end of the day, I would wake up and the next morning and find the children of the neighborhood had bumped in the car, scratched the car. Some might have, you know, cracked the windshield and also. So I became tired of this. And then I came to know this. So I used to go home and whenever I got into the house, I say, Oh Allah, Inni astawdi'uka sayyarati. Oh Allah, I entrust my car with you. He said, by Allah, ever since that day, nothing happened to my car. So, let's do that with our children. Let's do that with our wives, with our husbands, for the sisters, with ourselves. 
Entrust your faith with Allah. Finally, brothers, during this time when misconceptions and doubts are overwhelming, lust and desire is everywhere. For this heart to remain steadfast and firm on faith, for us to remain on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and on the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, holding strong to his religion, we need Allah's help. And this is the only way we can do it. Relying on ourselves is a failing battle, is a losing battle. So we need, we need to entrust Allah Azza wa Jal with these matters. However, for this protection to, to happen, there is a condition that must be fulfilled. In the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching Abdullah ibn Abbas, his cousin, when he was a young boy. And it's a very long narration. But from that narration, a statement he said. Guard the boundaries of Allah. Meaning, guard your faith. Stay away from prohibitions. Adhere to the commands of Muhammad ﷺ. Fulfill the pledge between you and Allah. And don't breach it. What's the result? Allah will guard you. Allah will preserve you. Allah will protect you. Our hearts can fluctuate any second from good to evil, from truth to falsehood. I have seen people whom I know personally who fluctuated not from practice to lack of practice, but from Islam to apostasy. They left Islam altogether. So who can control that heart? Who can protect that heart? Who can guard that heart? Allah. And Allah alone. But for us to be deserving, we need, we need to do our part before we expect anything from Allah. Azzawajal. 